Read it, please. Okay, next question is, why does God use angels when he could do everything himself? Perhaps it all has to do with something with love. He chooses to do that out of love for the angels because it even hints in the Old Testament that God has meetings with his angels and listens to them when he plans on doing something like a big warm family a meeting. Like he is running the universe together with his servants rather than just being cold and doing it all himself. Wow. Okay, Ben, I'd like you to go first. And I, I've, that's a fascinating question, I think. What, what do you say? Well, uh, we do know that um, there's different roles of diff for different angels. Uh, some are ministering to minister to the saints, uh, uh, but they were also involved in the it, they mediated the law at Sinai. So they're involved with law, and I see a lot of uh, occasions where angels are involved with the administration of law. So, for example, um, you know the whole idea of law uh, has a along with the idea of law, you have um, blessing and cursing based on the law. And again, the angels were, were uh, involved in the mediation of the covenant at Sinai. And in Revelation, they are what um, pour out uh, the, the different judgments of God. They they are the ones that issued the plagues. And again, that's, that's uh, I that has... That has uh, encompasses the idea of, of being, uh, you know, executing judgment under the law. Um, but for believers, they minister to, to us. But for unbelievers, again, it, it seems like they're again uh, involved with law and execution of of of, of temporal uh, judgment it, with regards to the law. So anyway, so why why did God choose to do that? Um, well. I think partially because we're made in the image of God and we should emulate that. So one thing in, uh, I think it's in Exodus, where uh, Moses was being overwhelmed with judging the people. So Jethro, his father-in-law, said, you know, what are you doing? It's not good that you're, what you're doing. It, you should divide up the labor um, and delegate it out because it's too much for one man. Um, and so, again, it's that not, not that anything's too much for God. Of course not. But I think again, he he is he wants us to imitate him in in all in every way. So we also should not uh, try to take too much on for ourselves. We we need each other, and um, we need to depend on each other. And uh, it's just the way you know. It sounds weird, you know. What, why why does God need man? He doesn't need man, but he chooses. Um, I believe that again, it's, it's part of a family. He delegates authority to his family members because we are family. You know he. He doesn't like to keep all things to himself. He likes to share the love and share the share the power and his glory with with his believers. Um, so in that respect, I, I just see that it just it's just the character of God. Um, he could do everything himself, uh, but he doesn't. Very good. That was an excellent answer, brother. Uh... Well, um, I, I think you, you got it right as I listened to you, uh, even though I'm, I personally feel very unsure uh, in answering the question. Um, I've thought about these things myself. I'm glad that someone else thinks this way and wonders. Uh, but um, I think that... Uh, God does want, uh, I don't want to say he's lonely because um, he, God is triune, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, uh, the Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost. Uh, and, and that is why we know that when the Bible says that God is love and God is triune, it's, it's absolutely necessity that God is plural because um, God could not be love unless there was an object Love has to have an object to exist. So uh, the object of God's love before creation was the, the, the Godhead. The Father loves the Son, the Son loves the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit loves the Father, and so, and so on. Uh, and yet, God wanted more. Uh, so we have creation. We, we, uh, I don't know how long it was be, between the creation of uh, in the heaven and, and uh, the, the angelic realm and, and uh, all of those creatures and, and 
humanity. Uh, but there, there's reasons God made these, and I, I think that uh, he gets pleasure from it. And he wants to have a relationship with angels and, and with man. Uh, and a relationship means that we're involved with each other. So um, it wouldn't be a relationship if God did everything and we're just observing. Um, so God does use angels. We have certain uh, plenty of examples in the Bible. Uh, Gabriel, of course, is the only uh, angel that's mentioned in the Bible. Of course, we have Michael. And there's there's disagreement about Michael, but, but we all agree that uh, Gabriel is an archangel. And uh, he, God used a, Gabriel, uh, Gabriel for a number of things that are recorded in the Bible. Uh, but angel also means messenger. So anybody that uh, God is using to give a message is, uh, is angelic in that respect. Uh, well, the word evangelist, it has in the middle of it angel. It means Eve is a prefix that means uh, good. Angel means message or news, and is just one who delivers it. So an evangelist is someone who's delivering uh, the good news. Um, so we're all angels in, in that respect, uh, those of us who are sharing the gospel, and God wants to use us for that, that purpose. Um, but there's another uh, uh, term or, uh, in, that we see in the Bible. It's called angel of the Lord. And not everybody agrees about what is this angel of the Lord? Uh, um, is it an angel? Well, it's, it's, some people, I, I, I'm one of them. I, I believe the angel of the Lord is a term for God himself. And we know that God doesn't always use an outside agent to uh, accomplish things. He comes down and gets involved himself. There are these things that in theologians call them theophanies or Christophanies, uh, where uh, God appears in the garden. It says that God walked with Adam and Eve in the garden. It was uh, uh, anthropomorphic. God, God is uh, appears as a person, uh, and He's there, engaging, involved. Uh, and then we know that God uh, also uh, manifests Himself and appeared uh, to Abraham uh, with a, there are three. There's two angels, and their third one. We, I think most people agree that that third one was God him, himself. Um, so God does get involved and, and, and take things in, on himself to, to do it. And sometimes he uses an angel. Sometimes he, he uses a human. Uh, but I'm thankful that God uh, wants us to, to be involved and, and, and we have a role to play. Uh, all right. Any more, Renee or Ben? Yeah. Okay. So... I agree with what both of you said. Uh, I really liked your point, uh, Ben, about, you know, how Moses said it's not good for you to do. Uh, I mean, they told Moses it's not good for you. It was his father-in-law or somebody, I think, uh, told him you can't do all this by yourself. And although God could, we see in Scripture that why he does it. Okay, Revelation 4.11 tells us why. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure, they are and were created. So God created everything for his pleasure. It wasn't because he lacked something or needed it. It's for his pleasure. And both of you have actually mentioned that. I also want to show you in the book of Psalms where uh, Jesus actually quotes from this when he says, has it not been said, ye are gods? And the little God movement is very heretical. Because Jesus was only using this to say, it's not unscriptural for me to claim to be uh, the son of God. Because he said to the angels, they, they were gods, little g gods, because they were acting on his behalf, right? Spiritual beings acting on his behalf with his authority. So you see in Psalm 82, God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. So uh, God has a congregation, an angelic or spiritual congregation. These are entities that are spiritual beings. We're told in scripture, we walk in the visible and invisible realms every day. He, he standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods, little g gods, 
These were the spiritual beings that were set to rule principalities over every nation. I believe this happened after Babel, the Tower of Babel, and they were split. And God took Israel for his portion, right? He, he set other spiritual entities to rule over the other nations. However, they were wicked. And those nations started worshiping these entities as gods. And there's a warning here about their unjust rule because they were supposed to rule on behalf of God. Of course, God knew all this would happen and it all works out because he's got it planned. But there's a reason God uses this. He's a God of order. He is a God of order, not chaos. So how long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked, Selah? Defend the poor and the fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and the needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you children of the Most High. But ye shall die like men. That's proof right here. These things were not human beings. So these little G God prosperity preachers need to cut it. Because when Jesus quoted this, he was trying to prove to them there's nothing heretical about me saying I'm the son of God. He called the angels gods and his children. Okay. So he references this in the gospels. I have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high, but ye shall die like men. They're not men and fall like one of the princes. Arise, O God, judge the earth for thou shalt inherit all nations. See, his portion was Israel. He put, he set these angelic or spiritual beings, principalities over other nations. And at the end, of course, God knew what was going to happen. It says that God will inherit all nations. And that's what he's done through the gospel of Jesus being preached to every creature. So uh, he, he is a God of order. He does send angelic beings or uh, as he said, angel can just mean messenger. Not every being in the spirit realm is called an angel. There's, you know, the Ofana, the thrones, uh, those weird wheel things with the eyeballs in them, uh, cherubim, uh, four-faced creatures, uh, six wings, seraphim, uh, uh, serpent, fiery serpent-like angelic beings. So there's all kinds of, I don't want to say races or species or whatever, different types of spiritual entities that God uses for various purposes. I would have to agree with you, Brother Luke, that those uh, that mention the angel of the Lord or the, the angel that has my name in him is a Christophany. It's a pre-incarnate Jesus. I believe that's who sat down with Abraham. I believe that's who was in the burning bush. I believe that who was face to face with Moses. So, uh, yep, I believe that's not just any old angel that is Jesus Christ before he came as a man. Uh, and strangely, I've been really uh, exposed for that belief. I don't know why my position on Melchizedek possibly being a pre-incarnate Christophany is such a big deal. I didn't think I was the only one that believed that. But uh, anyway, I agree with you that those are Christophanies. And I believe God is a God of order. And he created all things with a purpose and for his pleasure. That's why he doesn't do all things, everything by himself. Hmm. Yeah. Amen to all of that. Uh, regarding your your question, I um, I don't know why you'd be criticized uh, for your view on um, the uh, Christophanes and Melchizedek. I'm, I, that, I I believe that's the correct view, position. In fact, I I've always felt that that's the majority position. The vast majority of ever people I've ever talked to have, have agreed that. Uh, yeah. that Melchizedek has to be God. Uh, it has to be he has no father or mother without yeah. beginning, without end. But, but Kevin Zacker and I, I thought Bill maybe a couple of those guys really went crazy over it. And, yeah. Well, some people are what we by Bible calls nitpickers and gnat stringers. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, let me see. There was something else I was going to say, but I forgot now. But okay, Brother Ben, any any more on this? Um, no, one of the interesting thing I would say, um, I don't, I don't know. I, I, this is just a guess, but I, I'd be, 
I'd be curious to know, I wouldn't be surprised to discover that there were 70, you know, the Pharisees, Sadducees, or whatever, the ruling authority in Israel, it, when Jesus said, uh, you, ye are, are mm -hmm. gods, all of you, when he we recited that passage to the, uh, to the, uh, leadership of Israel, I bet you I would be surprised if there were 70 of them. Um, just because I see Israel, many parallels to it being a, like a microcosm for the world at large. And just like, just like the, the, like Renee said, the fallen sons of God who did not, uh, judge righteously. And I, what, I, how I think they did that essentially is that they, they appointed humans that would, uh, that showed allegiance to them and their ways, you know, to, unrighteousness. Uh, and so I think uh, I think it's basically how the world works is that the powers that be um, commune or, you know, worship these demons, these fallen angels, and they're given authority because they have that ability to, to, to get, delegate that authority for that particular nation. Um, and <clears throat> just as just as they uh, judged unrighteously, so too were the. Um, so too were the the leadership of Israel. You know they didn't they didn't uphold righteousness and look out for widows and orphans and things like that. They were really just all about uh, making a name for themselves. And so um, I think when and when Christ said that to them, he was basically making an allusion to that. Hey, you're the for Israel, you are the kind of like a microcosm or uh, an earthly example of of the heaven uh, the heavenly divine council. Uh, where God rules, and uh, and that's why we, I think we, are, as believers, are essentially going to replace those fallen sons of gods, of uh, sons of God. And th this this structure is, you know, goes way back in ancient, in, w way back in antiquity. Uh, like the pharaohs, for example, would delegate authority to their family members, um, and so and it would again, it would be part of the, of of that pharaohs. It would be a ruling family, a dynasty, if you will. Um, and so I think, again, God does the same thing. So it's, it's really interesting. Um, some really great points that were brought up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Renee.